do we want to start chatting about yeah. the actual roundup, the the top ten mm-hmm. here? I mean, sure, we can start with ten and work our way up to the first place. Yeah, one. that'd be fantastic. Talk about the, the pluses in there. So our tenth place coaster was Tour and Express uh, from Lance Hutchinson. I and it was a. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed, I like, because I was like, oh, it's a wooden coaster, and like the whole story part of the 10th entry, I thought was, for me, it, it's strength. I, I really like the idea of a, of a coaster being built and then destroyed, so they made it into an RMC. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that was that was great, and that's one of the cool things that uh, we encourage and reward with these big mega roundups, <laughs> is somebody that has some kind of story or vision uh going on and not just this is a roller coaster and it's in this you know this kind of setting those you know why what's going on what how did this come mm-hmm. to be and and expressing that uh somehow in their video editing or what they choose to show mm-hmm. it really works well so uh yeah it started off as an old wooden rickety wooden coaster that was uh uh beloved by the town according to the story a uh, big storm came through and mo- mostly destroyed the coaster they didn't want to let go of this thing as it, was, it was meant a lot to the town so they Contact, according to the story, the villagers contacted RMC, raised the funds for it, <laughs> and put together a new RMC based on the old layout. So it was a brilliant way to show two coasters. Like the it, original wooden coaster, it was, uh, and then the RMC conversion with the extra sharp uh, airtime and, and versions and all the fun RMC elements mm-hmm. added in later, and explain why you're seeing both of these coasters yeah, in the same spot. I thought I thought it rode so much better as an RMC. Uh, it was. Very, very. I really liked the RMC version of it. I don't know how intentional that was, because um, as you know, I've been on a couple RMCs that have been remade. You know, from uh, Texas Giant, and I never wrote it before it was RMC'd. But yeah, I really, really liked the RMC version. <laughs> the retracking I thought was really, really cool. Mm-hmm, absolutely. I, I legit might. thought the video ended, and I actually haven't seen the RMC part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well then, glad uh, you're I, here. What I will say, your input is so valuable, Mike. Thank you so much for you know, watch the whole video. I, okay. Um, cool. Well, because sometimes people like have the POV and then they've got like another five minutes of off-ride shots, and I'm like, I'm not interested. In that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will say the ones that were over five minutes. And that goes for all ten of these. Sometimes we're a little bit lengthy for yeah. me. I, I like mine to be a little bit more concise. And I know you're saying with the whole story element. Uh, it, you kind of need to be that long, but I thought this one maybe a little bit long overall, but yeah, solid coaster. Yeah, and that was in our, our feedback as well, that the video could have been condensed. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you wouldn't need uh, probably fewer off-ride shots or, or and then speed up the process of telling the story about the conversion or make that more of a focus. may not have needed a full POV of the original right. coaster, but enough to get the point across of that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it could have... Uh, and we, we've had this discussion a little bit before when we recommend people to keep their videos two to three to four minutes. Mm-hmm. And some people will inevitably ask, do we have to? And like, well, you don't. But the point that I make at that is that it's very, the longer your video gets, the harder it is to make it captivating for that length of time, mm-hmm. especially with the short attention spans that we have these days with social media and, uh, and squirrel. Mike. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Clearly, so one of the three people in this chat didn't even watch the whole video. Uh, exactly. Well, we, okay. We as judges watch the whole video, but we're of course especially critical of the fact that y- you got to actually, you know, show something all the way through and, and and make it interesting for that entire video. Otherwise, that detracts from the presentation portion of what we're evaluating because right. you yeah. have a lot of extra shots that are yeah. just it's dragging and it doesn't doesn't need to be there. And I'll give you a great example from our first roundup of a coaster that did not place anywhere near uh, that list. Um, it was a 20 minute long video. Oh, oh God. That's right. And yes, yes, Mike, I showed Mike this one. and I watched that one all the through. way through because it, it was amazing what he was showing. Yeah, it, it started with a walk that started at a, a dock at a <laughs> lake. And you walked along this dock and then through this path that kept going uh, and going and going and eventually you found the queue for a coaster and you walked through that entire queue and all the way up into the station and up to the front row and waited for the gates to open to then board the train and see the POV of the actual ride. It was 16 minutes of walking Mm -hmm. at normal speed, not running speed, walking Mm -hmm. speed to get to sit down in the train and actually see. Because my favorite part of riding a coaster is walking through the queue well and that's yes. that's going to be my point of another um another one that placed in roundup 200 we'll get to that later but it's like 
really condense what you're showing me because this is a submission piece. This isn't necessarily Mm -hmm. here's everything I did for this project. It's here's the best things that, that came out of this project that I did. Yeah. Um, Well, I say, go ahead. Yeah. So exactly like that, but to to underscore the point of that one, um, the best part about your ride on big thunder mountain is not starting the video when you've parked your car. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and that's the whole point is that get you know focus on the best parts of that. Now that's with that said, there are long videos that are amazingly captivating all the way through. Also in this roundup, um, mm-hmm. they're also yeah. in this roundup and also in previous roundups, ones that went longer because they had that much to show, or their their video has you know essentially movements mm-hmm. and and acts to mm-hmm. it. So it's it's changing things up. It's not showing you the same thing for you know, eight or 10 minutes, it's right. changing what it's showing along the way. And that's brilliant. That, that shows the strength of the concept and having thought it through exactly what you're going to show, why you're including all of these parts that they're important and that you don't dwell on any one particular thing forever. Right. Yeah. No. So, so number 10, I thought, uh, Turin express, I, I was like, if this is number 10, <laughs> cause I did, I watched 10 down to one and I said, if this is number 10, well, Hot damn, I'm in for, for some excellent videos, and mm-hmm. it definitely Absolutely. didn't disappoint. So, uh, number nine? Number nine number is nine. Crown Point, the extended trailer Feels from fun. Tyler Demian. Uh, this is a separate amusement park he put together and, and invented and uh, showed lots of lots of pretty shots of and uh, lets you ride on you know, take rides on various coasters through there. And uh, it's a nicely thought, to get, thought out and realized full park. Right. No, I, I thought this one was, was solid as well. Uh, I, I, I don't remember. There are parts of POVs, but not through, not entire ride-throughs, I think. Yeah. Correct? And, right. Absolutely. And with the, I think he's got five or six coasters in there. It would become overkill if you had to watch every yeah, single absolutely. ride. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, so it was the right call to, to focus, since he's presenting the whole park, the amusement park as a whole, Rather than a particular ride inside of there, it makes more sense to give you pieces of everything versus right. the whole everything. So, so now when it comes to making parks here in, in No Limits, I'm a park guy. I care more about parks than coasters. Uh, I see parks on No Limits. How much, um, that sounds awful to say extra work, but <laughs> how much out, but you know what I'm saying, how much outside of the program, like I don't know SketchUp very well. I, I'm assuming these people also have a firm grasp on some, um, modeling software as well uh, just some of them do yeah. j- just and how they do so parks are, are are more for the advanced no limits user i guess or how, what would you it, say it depends on what you're trying to do for what people well what you're trying to accomplish and show some people do like to make parks out of it uh and there's a spectacular park that if you you really should check out and mm-hmm. everybody that's uh planet coaster event go look up terra mm-hmm. park uh it's just phenomenal what is in this park. It is a fully realized amusement park inside of No Limits uh, that just keeps getting better and better and better. Individual themed lands that have very cohesive themes in each, each of the Soundtracks. areas with anchor roller coasters yep. in each of their uh, monorail that goes around mm-hmm. the park. Uh, outside the park, there's a luxury mm-hmm. hotel and uh, parking areas. I mean, it, it's it's everything. And uh, to give you, let you know why this is possible, No Limits 2 has a number of functions that allow this to happen in real time that are the same kind of tools that professional game designers would use to keep the frame rate mm-hmm. up. So they're all available and they're there to be made use of. We have, uh, we do allow for importing about exterior 3D objects, which is essentially how these things are being done. Mm-hmm. We have a full Java-based scripting engine that allows all kinds of effects and animations and and the flat rides to to move around and, and work as they would in real life. Plus, we've also allowed uh, keyframing as as well, so we we'll support keyframing of the objects, which is animation. Uh, inside of No Limits, we have these things called No Limits Two Scenery Object Files, where you create this new uh, NL2 SEO inside of this, which is basically a container file, and inside of that, you then specify your the three D files you want to bring mm-hmm. in. Uh, and allows you to set here is the the high detail hero model of this particular building or ride or bench or whatever it is you're going to place in there. It gives you controls to set levels of detail so that at certain distances, and you can configure all of this, it switches to a lower detail model. Or at another distance, when you get far enough away, it vanishes or entirely. Or clipping parts uh, away from it. It starts 
or starts clipping and things start disappearing. And that's all configurable inside of this file. And you, you, you set all of the settings, you set all of the models and all the versions of the models that you want with all those, con uh, with a number of different material settings and other properties that are all very useful. And once you're done with that, you now have this single container file of all of those settings preset that you can then plop into place uh, over and over throughout your park. And it will retain all those settings every time you place another instance of that. Uh, it's among the tools that Mike makes use of as he's been putting together some of his beautiful trees for mm -hmm. the system. Yeah, he's using all of those exact same settings mm -hmm. to have the main high detail version of the tree and then have lower ver model, uh, lower detail versions of it and eventually it disappears when you get far yep. enough. Right. And it's all just using the built-in controls. Okay. Yeah, No Limits 2 so, also is just an incredible program as well because it it does things that um, even I don't think Planet Coaster is doing. I think Planet Coaster has the levels of detail um, disintegration, but I don't think that if you are looking in one particular direction and there's something in front of you, that it is still rendering what's behind it. No Limits 2 doesn't do that. It actually takes it wow. takes into account what you're seeing, and it only mm -hmm. renders what you are looking at, so that if there's anything behind it, it's currently not rendering that. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, well, that's pretty good. It's an automatic function that does that. And then we also have uh, occluders, which you can manually place to allow things like as you go inside of a building, it transitions to now showing you all of the interior mm -hmm. scenery and nothing outside of that, okay. which is being is in place in Terra so that you can go into one particular building that's um, kind of like the, the Woos Town area of Fantasia mm -hmm. Land in Germany, uh, where you've got a couple of rides and a roller coaster, uh, spinning roller coaster inside of a building, so it's its own little mm -hmm. environment. As soon as you step in there, everything inside will pop into place as you head around a corner. The entire mass of outside of the uh, building park vanishes, right. and you have you still maintain a very high frame rate, and you're enjoying just what's inside because that's where you are. And then you step back out, then of course the inside of the building goes away, the out, uh, outside comes back into view, and you're mm -hmm. in good shape. Huh. Wow. Well, that was a very... Like that, that's really interesting to, to know. And I know that that went really far away I from know. number nine, but <laughs> <laughs> if I could say that valuable information, yeah, if I could say something about Crown Point. Um, parks in No Limits Two or have always been like this 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 long off dream. Um, I know that people have have asked about like a pathing tool or peeps or something like that. Um, it's pretty incredible to see how it can run all of those things in a in a program that is really just designed to do one coaster in one environment. Um, mm -hmm. And ah, well, that and uh, stop you right there, Mike. <laughs> actually, No Limits uh, One was the one that was designed to only allow one coaster in one particular scene. No Limits Two, we intentionally designed it rather than focusing on a single coaster. Okay to focus on it being a park file that allows for a whole bunch of different things inside of what you can do and all of the controls necessary for all of that to work. So from the beginning, we, we set all these tools up and we've been watching as people start to get to use more and more and more and more mm -hmm. of it to realize full gigantic parks and enjoy that as big as you can, as big as you want to go, it will support you and give you the tools necessary to keep all of that running well. As long so as you know uh, the tools and, and work with it. Because you, you can still yeah. overload your park and, and get terrible frame rate, but the program yeah. is doing everything it can so that it doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. And we give you all the tools as well to continue to make it working. Terra Park is gigantic and massive. It has multiple roller coasters and animated flat rides, and it runs mm -hmm. well. It really does. If you fly from overhead, you can start seeing some of the, the objects disappear and reappear as you get closer. And, uh, the monorail track, you know, chunks of it are missing until they get within range if you're flying way above <laughs> it. If you're actually on it, though, it's set just right so that you never see any of those elements popping in and out because uh, they're they're designed to set up, to pop in before you come into view and see that section of track suddenly right, appear. Right, that's, that's just standard uh, game design. Yeah. Exactly. It's just, we have those same tools here. Um, most of the folks that are used to you know Planet Coaster and Roller Coaster Tycoon Three, they're not used to this to having to set all those controls there and. They give you, they're a little more constrained in what they're allowing you to do in those systems. Uh, no Limits 2, we gave you a square mile of build <laughs> space and all of the tools to optimize it, and it's up to you to bring in the most efficient models and to, and to set it up for your, your liking. Right. Although if that still isn't working very well on top of all that, uh, and you, you can't figure out how to optimize it, our video capture tool doesn't care. Yeah. Because it will sit there and take as long as it needs to to render all 60 frames a second or whatever you set it to and give and give you exactly what you need to have a perfect video once all is said and done, which is 
which is great. So that's how even uh, horribly performing things like Augur 291, <laughs> which nobody's computer can run at a consistent 60 plus frames no. a second ever, has a beautiful 60 frames a second video of it because our video capture tool yeah. works that way. And that is cool. one of the things I wanted to hit on with Crown Point. Um, we have these tools. They're really good. But the video is lacking fidelity, like quality. And I'm curious why. We haven't figured that out. Uh, Tyler's videos, they've gotten a lot better. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for some reason, uh, hes it's still not coming out as sharp as I know that they can be. And we've, we've given him some tips and pointers. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, they, they have gotten better. But hes he hasn't figured out the exact best settings to get it to come out looking spectacularly sharp every single okay. time. So we're still working on it. And then a um, question for you, because we went way off into the weeds again. Why is this number nine? So the... For number nine on this one, it was a very nice amusement park. Um, it didn't have much beyond a very nice amusement park. It was basically just uh, just a collection of rides. The rides themselves were laid out in kind of a very grid-like fashion that when you're looking at it from up high, it really looks like it's it almost looks like it's a you know, laid out like a roller coaster tycoon mm-hmm. two or one park uh, with lots of 90 degree angles. It didn't look very organic the way everything was placed. Um, we did like a number of the shots at the beginning, such as you know driving along the road to get in there, the helicopter flying around the the outside of the park. So there are a couple of nice angles and nice shots that showed off more of it. Um, and then when you got in there, the coasters were fine. Uh, there was just nothing story wise, nothing that drove it a little bit higher than that. Uh, it edged out number 10 to get into ninth place because there is a little bit more work going on for the mm-hmm. scenery um, and a couple of nice presentation shots. And while it didn't have the story, it, it did have a little higher level of effort overall for the things in the background. Uh, we did have a number of people that were not as thrilled with this one making the list. Uh, some controversy about uh, controversy in quotes amongst you know three people <laughs> uh, about the fact that this particular person likes to Tyler does take objects that are freely available for free public oh. use off of the um, the SketchUp library and uses them to fill up objects inside of his park. And who cares? That's perfectly allowable. The license for those objects allows them to be used mm-hmm. like that. It's no big deal. Uh, you know that some of the people say, "Oh, you should have to build and model all of your own work." And you know, people who have done that, they've certainly ranked higher. Um, we're not going to know where all these objects come from. We're just looking to see: are they well put together, and do they mm-hmm. fit? You it's know, equivalent you, to the Steam Workshop. Like, right. There are people in Planet Coaster that, oh, it's 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 not an authentic Planet Coaster project if you don't build every piece yourself. Right. But, but then you that's why the yourself. workshop exists. You get over yourself. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Get, get over it because you're, those people who are complaining that are likely not the people who are building it all themselves. There's oh. probably a few, but there are some that are out there that I know of that are ones that have built everything themselves mm-hmm. or worked in a team, giving lots of credit where credit mm-hmm. is due. And they're probably upset that he's not giving credit where credit is due. And yeah, okay, it's all. It's not that big of an issue though. It's. Is you can go to these uh, free warehouses and download the most spectacular models that are all there and scatter them around your park. That does not mean you're going to get a good <laughs> rating, right? Because you're just spamming a bunch of random high quality models around with no purpose or meaning or to their existence exactly. and why they're there. We're going to look at it going, okay, why is you know the Harry Potter Hogwarts castle sitting next to um, the Cinderella castle from from Disney, <laughs> um, which is sitting next to a bunch of you know old West mines, mm-hmm. which is sitting next to a space station? Like, this doesn't make any sense. You know, just because those models exist doesn't mean that they're putting them all together is going to automatically equal a high score. You have to have a vision and a purpose behind that. Right. And Tyler had that. Random objects would not. <laughs> right. And I got to say... Cool. Planet Coaster follows that same kind of uh, just throw anything together and make it a park. Uh-huh. I can't wait uh-huh. for the comments for this video. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on to number right. eight. It. <laughs> yes, IT the ride all about the adventures of uh, the information technology department as they're going around <laughs> updating drivers on your computer. Exactly. No, it's uh, uh, It the ride, a nice Gerslauer Eurofighter set in a spooky environment with some nice special effects inside to uh, evoke scenes from the classic, uh, from the more recent movie of mm-hmm. Pennywise and things like the Red Balloon and just little nice little scares mm-hmm. like that in a very uh, stylistic range environment of a, a fun little coaster and it worked out rather well this is an example where the the presentation may not have been the strongest suit yet the story and the environment that was created definitely had a purpose and did a good job of, of giving you that sense of, of the feelings it was trying to present to yes, you yes and as a result it 
came into eighth place. Yeah, I think the 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 uneasy atmosphere is, is really done quite well with both the the pieces, the scenery pieces, as well as the the effects of the environment and all that. I, I thought it was it was done real well. Now the in, is the rain. Is that something that is custom? You have to do that yourself because uh, it looks very like bright. I think. It does, and the rain is a built-in feature. We do have weather mm-hmm. effects that are part of No Limits, uh, and you can control them uh, inside of the, the simulation, and it'll it'll work with them that way. That said, the rain that he's working with, I'm not exactly sure what he did. It, it definitely comes off as a bit weird and stylized, so haven't figured that out yet. It just it, it adds an extra little spice to that particular mm-hmm. video that was uh, certainly made it yeah, interesting. I think, I'm yeah. thinking he's crushing levels because the, the environment's pretty dark, so if he's trying to get those those highlights up, then the rain is going to kind of take uh, them. Ah, you think maybe maybe in post? Yeah, that's okay. what I'm thinking. And this is yeah. the first of the videos that I'm like, yes, this is a this is a roundup that is central to like cinematics and has like a feeling. It's not just dark rides, and although dark rides are cool, I like to see um, the actual videos being put together and telling a story in that way. And I think this one did it really well. Yeah, I agree. I think it was very strong. I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. And that's Absolutely. all I've got so to say. Move along here. And, ah, we managed not to go into the weeds Yay. for a change. Hey! Uh, number on seven. to number seven, 10 Speed, the Coheating okay, Cambria Coaster. I have to ask, and sorry if this ends up getting cut, why on everyone after this <laughs> did it say RIP 10 Speed? <laughs> like I have no idea. Sometimes our community just runs with a joke, and I have to do a lot of research to figure out <laughs> what. Like happened. I swear to God, every coaster that's higher up, every, like everyone's commenting, "RIP ten speed, RIP ten speed." Oh, who so. the hell knows? I, All I, right, I didn't know if there was something. Okay, I haven't figured this one out either. Uh, I know that there was Mike accidentally double commented on another video uh, somewhere in there. And then everybody else started copying and pasting his <laughs> double comment. So oh. uh, our, our fans will do weird yes. things. All right. Well, 10 Speed, I said to Mike when I was watching it for the first time, I said, this looks like something that belongs in like Thorpe Park or uh, Alton Towers. Mm-hmm. It really feels, uh, Alton Towers, it really feels like something they would do. It's got that creepy vibe. And I really loved how it felt um, less, like it, it felt themed in a theme park environment. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense, that, not super. Yeah, that typically happens because um, it's so much to actually build an entire environment out that you basically only do the the entry and the exit, and maybe the plaza, but that's pretty much it. And then it kind of exists on its own. Mm-hmm. But this, it just felt like a real ride. Um, as far as it felt like it was placed in a park. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm. But yeah, I. I I, was I think it has the yeah, Alton Tower environment for sure, with the gray clouds and the gloomy atmosphere. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. It just feels like I'm in this is British. depressing England. Yeah, yeah it's very British. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it does have the gloomy atmosphere, which is part of what the the story and the feeling and the environment of the ride is going to be for right. that uh, that kind of setup. So it's a uh, um, it's. It, it it has the you know the, the dead trees in there the whole uh, dreary setup mm-hmm. and so it's it has a nicely put together station building and a queue and it's got it's working towards a story that's based on the the lyrics of the mm-hmm. song which I I know that song I've got it on uh, I got the album I just didn't I never wanted to pay attention to lyrics I'm a drummer and I I listen to the, <laughs> the rhythms and the the feeling of the song otherwise I'm not actually somebody that follows them and I don't says, follow oh, lyrics deep, either. meaningful lyrics I get so, you right there with you <laughs> uh, yeah so so when I when I finally realized the connection it's like why is this called 10 speed and i finally realized oh the singer's singing 10 speed over and over again in the song oh yeah that, that didn't hit <laughs> me until then bike that wants to um, kill people is that what this yeah it's a murderous bike? bike that's telling his it's a bike that's telling the person to kill other people ah, or something cool. yeah how He's charming got, there's some voice uh, acting in the beginning that was pretty solid so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah it's pretty it's got a lot of neat stuff going for it um and I'll let you guys know that 8th, 7th, 6th place were difficult to place for us. There was a lot of discussion as those three were shuffling around for exactly who would rank in the order that they ranked mm-hmm. in. 10 um, Speed has got a really well done environment, uh, great editing for mm-hmm. the video. Uh, what we felt could have been a little bit stronger is outside of this this area of these dead trees, there's not a lot going on too much further outside of kind of this uh, one particular bubble for the mm-hmm. scenery. Uh, okay. Very good station for the uh, station building and, and things like that. Um, the ride is a perfectly done Vacoma 
motorbike style. Uh, it follows the same kind of pattern, uh, which is good. I have a launch Vacoma motorbike, um, which are kind of short. The video is one of those ones that kind of drags a bit and it keeps getting, it starts getting repetitive because it's showing, it's filling up to the song yet the actual video or the actual coaster there's not that much there so it has to kind of keep recycling mm -hmm. i know he's not using the same shot over and over again but we see the same element from multiple angles over and over and over again it starts starts to wear just a little bit so the combination of not as much custom scenery uh spectacular presentation great video editing great environment uh and a, a nicely done theme and story to it um but without as many things outside of there and the repetitive nature of this a short coaster being shown on a nearly four minute video kind of edged it down just a tad. Yeah, and okay. um, when I got the sixth place in Roundup 100, it was kind of the same kind of thing where it's there's not much going on around it. Um, and what I did was try and get in and get out as quickly as possible. And so it's it's kind of funny they still these videos still kind of hit this this six seven eight sort of mark because that's that's kind of where they yeah. that's kind of where they are. They're good. They're a strong concept. They're shot really well, but they're just a one and done. Mm, absolutely. Ironically, the uh, seventh place coaster with a Coheed and Cambria soundtrack last year's seventh place uh, coaster in Roundup 150 also had a Coheed and Cambria That's right. soundtrack. Huh. So, uh, <laughs> and knowing our fans that there's, they're going to just assume that going forward, if you use Coheed and Cambria <laughs> as your soundtrack, you're going to yeah. get seventh place. There in you Roundup go. Well, now I know what I'm going to do for mine for uh, 250. Yeah. There you go. Yep, that's all you need to do to place is use Coheed and Cambria Centric. <laughs> that's the only thing that places at seventh. <laughs> all right. So uh, with that in mind. Well, and Zampano <laughs> number... also. Okay. So Zampano did the Coheed and Cambria coaster last uh, roundup. And then before that, he did Alpha Omega. And he was also in seventh place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got seventh place twice in a row. Very different concepts that yeah. time. So it's just odd how yeah. it works out. <laughs> All right, moving on to number six, we have uh, Stranger Things Mind Flayer from uh -huh. Basilisk Rides. Uh, this is a very interesting. A lot of lot of build up on this one on the forums as uh, he was busy working and putting everything together mm -hmm. uh, based on the Stranger Things show. I've never uh, seen an was, episode, so I was like, this is going to go over my head. Yeah, I haven't either. Um, although uh, Kevin, uh, known on the farms as Fighter, who is uh, judging, has seen the show, so he's more familiar with things that would be referenced. Um, nice B&M dive coaster with the, the smaller trains. Mm -hmm. uh, nicely put together coaster, some more cinematic shots. A uh, lot of scenery. Built a nice town mm -hmm. around the coaster, so the, a lot of good scenery in there. Um, and overall, a very nice concept and uh, very well executed, which uh, edged it into sixth place. Cool. Um, does this one have? Is this one of those that did not have the full POV? Uh, this one. I think it cuts out a little bit before okay. the end. Yeah. All right, because that was one of my. There's a few, and, and we'll get to them in a minute. That that didn't have full POVs or any, or just cuts. And I was like, ah, oh, it's bummer. I wish I had seen the whole thing. But yeah, no, this was uh, th maybe this was another post editing thing. But it felt kind of the track felt kind of washed out, like mm. almost like untextured. Uh, the white a little track, bit. yeah, it was uh, something that caught my eye. I think eye. it ends up being um, again, the white on white is a very strange. Yeah. Okay, and again, I, maybe, and I'm losing a lot of the the reference here because I haven't seen any of the show. Mm -hmm. So you're actually okay. Uh, it's, Kevin has seen the show quite a bit, and what this was it turned out to be one of the just an odd comment on it is that he couldn't really see what the connection to the show is other than it had some of the some of the places like the school is named after the same school inside of the show mm. but it didn't have anything that seemed to evoke anything from that universe otherwise thematically other, yeah so um now that being said you know no one should have to know the source material to understand what's going on in a video right. like this um an example from last year's roundup that got an honorable mention it was themed after the game firewatch mm -hmm. and it was set with that kind of background and environment and it has was named after that and it has uh, uh, this watchtower and mentions of a fire or something like that in the background which was all great but none of us had played it so we had no idea what he's talking about and we saw what essentially seemed like an overgrown gazebo in a wooded area with an rmc and very well put together but we had no idea what any of it meant <laughs> and and that's okay because it's one of the challenges when you're going to use existing ip or inside of a, a ride like this or an existing idea or concept is you only have 
inside of a ride, you only have about two minutes to, uh, or a minute and a half to two minutes of a ride experience to get your point across about whatever key emotion or whatever key element of that ride is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you have to consider people that have no idea what this whole thing is. Right. And so you need some way to introduce it to them of what the key idea is. If you look at some of the ride design of classic Disneyland dark rides like Peter Pan and Mr. Toads and Snow White um, and Pinocchio, uh, for the most part, you don't really need to know much about what the full story is. You can just dive into the fact that the, you know, they're just trying to expressing one little piece of it. They're not trying to retell the entire movie right. uh, in in their ride sequences. Uh, Twilight Zone Tower of Terror was another great example. Uh, you don't have to have ever watched the Twilight mm-hmm. Zone to understand what's going on. You can yeah. go in there and just see that it's it's just this you know hotel spooky thing happened and now you're checking in and spooky thing happens to you. Right. Uh, so haunt. so then I guess yeah. Uh, so this is it's a solid coaster. And that's what I took away. Oh, this is a pretty good coaster. <laughs> mm-hmm. With yeah. good scenery. It just that, you know, I don't know what mind flare means. I don't know how it relates. If we missed some point in there or if that was supposed to be the big scary thing. But that being said, even if we didn't know those elements, there didn't seem to be anything other than this is a nice built, nice coaster and he built a town around it. Yeah, yeah. There's, so there's, that was no, there's no context clues either um, in the ride itself. There's, there's nothing. It doesn't go into uh, any sort of like dark scene or something like that. It's just... Uh, uh, it's just a coaster and you have real life examples where you've got um, like Baron 18 eight, uh, night night what is it 18 fuck um, <laughs> the, one, <laughs> the one at the Efteling I can't remember exactly the year um, Baron just call it Baron, Baron. Um, uh, the yeah, ride itself I've... doesn't really tell the story it's the lead up to it and then the, the story resolves itself on the ride um, that didn't really happen yeah. here either. But well, I, what I will say, um, and why it should have been placed, uh, where is it? Number six. Yeah. I love the the choice of music, the mood, the the shots. Everything is very exciting and kind of unsettling. And I think that is just kind of where it fell. Um, it, it's it's supposed to be an unsettling or, or a strange town. So, something yeah. weird is going on, and that's what it felt like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that's so. That, as I mentioned, six, seven, eight were the most difficult for us to place because they were all similar in terms of, uh, and they all had certain strengths over each other. That one did this a little bit better, but not quite as good as the mm-hmm. other one. Uh, and so it became there was these moved around a lot. Uh, they we determined that they were going to stay kind of clumped together, but exactly how to rank them was one of the most difficult things to yeah. That's always for hard us to do when in, you have in ranking. Similar, yeah, that's always hard to do. Cool. All right. Well, yeah, I thought it was a good coaster, though, overall. I mean, ride's nice. 